Welcome to another special report from Catholic Family News. I'm Editor-in-Chief Brian McCall, and I'm happy to be joined today uh, by Mr. Richard Carlucci, who is the uh, moving force behind a wonderful uh, Catholic online resource called Catholic Audio Prayers. So welcome to our show at Catholic Family News today. Thank you, Brian. It's a pleasure to be with you today. So we're, we're going to introduce uh, really is an interesting and amazing story, how, how Richard came to uh, this point where he started this online uh, apostolate, and then tell you a little bit more about uh, the Catholic audio prayers. So to, to sort of kick it off, I'll show you, as you'll see on the screen, this is uh, the, the heart of what we want to talk about, Catholic audio prayers, uh, which provides a wealth of resources for enhancing and, and, and uh, making making much more efficacious our prayer life, drawing on a vast store of uh, Catholic devotions, traditions, and integrating uh, music particularly into, into that. So the, um, this is the main website, and uh, it uh, has a whole variety, as we'll talk about a little bit, of various rosaries with different themes attached to them, and then uh, also a whole variety of uh, chaplets that, again, chaplets are something the rosary has sort of fallen away among many mainstream Catholics they are hardly used anymore. But if that's the fate of the rosary, many of these rich devotions and chaplets have, have you know, disappeared even a greater extent than, than the rosary. So uh, really just even having them available for people to know about them. Uh, I just thought very briefly to sort of give us a flavor for what we mean. Uh, play just one of the samples. There are a variety of samples on, on the website uh, of the of the al I guess albums doesn't seem to do it justice, but the uh, the resources. Um, this is the Holy so Soul Sorrowful Rosary uh, sample, and I, I'm not sure if all of them. You can tell us a little bit later, but many of them uh, make use of uh, beautiful recorded music music of the Benedictines of Mary, Queen of Apostles, uh, from the Abbey of Our Lady of Ephesus in Gower, Missouri, uh, traditional Benedictine community. Uh, that has uh, really made a name for itself in reviving uh, beautiful, well, well prepared Catholic music. So it's sort of a, a great, wonderful, holy partnership uh, that that Richard has with them. So I just thought I'd pray, play a brief part of this sample to give you a flavor for why we're here talking. In the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I believe in God, the Father of the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the... So again, there's a little bit of the sample there just to sort of whet our appetites for, uh, for what we're going to talk about. So let's now back up. We've now sort of got to the uh, uh, the end. St. Thomas says, begin with the end in mind. So in a certain sense, that's the end, the, the, the online uh, apostolate you started. Let's go back to the beginning and talk about how you, you got there. So maybe share with us a little bit your story. Uh, you know, were you raised Catholic? What was your upbringing, li upbringing like? And uh, maybe just start us off there. Sure. So um, I was born um, November 18th, 1980 in Portchester, New York. Mm -hmm. out of uh, Westchester County. Um, I'm one of six children. Um, of course, my name is Richard Walter Carlucci, Richard after my father's middle name, and Walter after my mother's spiritual advisor, ah. um, Father Walter Chisek, uh, an, uh, an amazing uh, devout priest uh, who in 1941 was... Um, arrested under accusation of espionage, spent 23 years in prison, 15 years hard labor in the gulag. Um, and his book, for our, our, our viewers, I think it's With God in Russia. Is that that's that the title? Yes, yes, an incredible, incredible book. I, I, that's amazing that he was your, your mother's sort of spiritual guide because he's such, such an incredible priest. Yeah, you know, when growing up, when you're so young, you don't realize the extent of all of the amazing people that came through um, my family. And only now as I get older and I have my own children, do you realize the blessings and graces that uh, we received. And obviously there's gonna be a part in my story where um, those blessings and graces were also given to them. So um, 
yeah, he was a very special priest. He, when he was in prison, he still did uh, masses, heard confessions, and um, you know he brought very powerful blessings with him. Mm. He died on the feast of Our Lady on December eighth, nineteen eighty four. And um, yeah, he's he's under consideration uh, for possible a, a canonization. Um, and he right now he's a servant. His title is servant of God. Mm-hmm. So um, moving along, um, I attended uh, Corpus Christi in Fort Chester, New York. It was a Salesian school founded by Don Bosco. Um, at the time, uh, the Reverend. Peter M. Rinaldi was head of the parish. Mm-hmm. Now, Father Rinaldi was a priest who publicized the shroud um, to Roman Catholics in America for the first time. Yes. Um, in 1940, um, wrote a book, I Saw the Holy Shroud. Um, just another amazing gift in 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 our area, in our family, um, he was the world's greatest um, authority on the shroud. And you're hearing a lot about the shroud today, especially with um, Divine Mercy. I think there are, um, there are many videos where there's a study of how the shroud and the image of Jesus and the Divine Mercy are a perfect match. So it's just, it's a small world. Uh, it is. It is. And and for our listeners, uh, the May edition of the paper, which will be out uh, shortly, uh, has actually the beginning of a two-part series on the Shroud by Father Couture, who's, who's done an extensive study of the literature on it and uh, condenses that and presents it. So part one will be out in the May paper. Sorry, continue. So yeah, you, no, incredible, that's great. incredible that's... influences on, in your life there. Yeah, I'm definitely going to read that. Um, yes. Father Rinaldi brought um, full-size replica of the shroud to Corpus Christi um, and a full-size, um, a, I, forgive me, a Piatus uh, sculpture mm. I, I, um, wow. and, and many other third, second, first class relics from Italy. Um, the reason why I'm mentioning is that is because growing up, I visited a lot of these relics um, and I attribute um, you know, those special moments to who I am today, because I know they're very powerful. Mm. Yeah, um, it's just um, just one amazing story after the other. Um, Yeah. So tell us, but you, you, so uh, coming really from a a rich Catholic background, uh, you know, parents who, who, introduce these important influences to you, uh, not least of which your, your namesake there, uh, your middle name. Tell us, but you've obviously had uh, difficulty, right? God often brings us on a spiritual journey through, through some trying experiences. Uh, and I know your family has had that, some of that, that suffering. Do you want to introduce us to that part of your, your story? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, let me, let me think there are, there are a lot of um, struggles and suffering in my family, but I think one um, that stands out the most is um, my sister. Yes. Uh, she was born with um, cerebral palsy, and my, my parents basically sort of sacrificed their life to take care of her. And to take care of a person with cerebral palsy, um, you know, you can't do it alone. No. You, you have, you need God in your life. I think um, God was preparing um, this family uh, for this blessing that that was what I call a living rosary. Um, and... Uh, I would like to dive into her life yes. and I'd like to dive into, you know, the miraculous story that is attached with her. Um, it's very intimate. Um, it is very emotional and I just kind of want to let you know mm-hmm. and your audience in advance. Um, I apologize if I sort of break down, but I think it's important that I share this because um, I believe it can touch, you know, 
even the harden, hardest of hearts out there. Um, and so, so you may may want to go get a tissue box if you're if you're listening to this because it, um, it is definitely yeah. an emotional story. I, I attest to that. So yes, why don't you introduce this to your sister and, and start telling us about her? So yeah, so my sister uh, was born with um, cerebral palsy, and you know, not much of the condition was known at the time. Um, she suffered much under you know new drug trials, and you know just the sheer struggle of her condition. Um, you know, as I matured, I started to share in the graces how God was pouring out through her. Hmm. And I saw my parents' complete life of sacrifice as a good example um, to be in my own life. Um, and not even in my own life, but my brothers and sisters, as you know, like, again, I'm one of six children um, born alive, um, a total of nine. Mm -hmm. um, and so... I can tell you it's, it, it was hard and they fought often, um, you know, with uh, the, the everyday struggles when you have a daughter who, well, didn't fight often, but you know, uh, if you're a parent and, you know, your, your daughter is always sick or your son is always sick, um, you have different opinions on how you want to make them better because the goal is to make them better. And you can only go so far when, you know, you have a, a uh, a family member with that condition, you kind of just have to accept mm -hmm. it and you have to um, be at peace with it and mm -hmm. use it for the greater glory of God. Um, and, you know, my sister said yes to God at the first moment of her life. So um, fast forwarding a bit, I was uh, right, right about the time my second son was born um, I received a phone call from my mother. Um, she had told me that my sister's in the hospital and, um, it doesn't look good. There's not a lot of time left. So as I made my way down to the hospital, <clears throat> they're still in New York and I moved to upper Connecticut. As I'm driving, everything's a blur, um, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. um, as I, uh, as I entered the room, um, <clears throat> uh, the entire family was there. Um, we've never really experienced this in our family. Um, growing up, you know, you think that you're, family members are invincible. They're going to be with you forever. And, sure. Um, so I, 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 you know, I entered the room. I uh, silently <sighs> broke into tears. Um, she was having a hard time breathing. And uh, the doctors had put her on morphine. Um, as some time passed in the day, the doctors used to seeing people in this state couldn't understand why and how she was still holding on. Mm -hmm. um, my older sister, also a doctor, couldn't understand it either. And so at this point, um, she was pretty much uh, maxed out on morphine. And as time kept going by, um, each time that we thought was going to be her last moment, she would defy it. Mm -hmm. um, not understanding um, why God wouldn't take her peacefully why um you know why he allows suffering i mean in the moment you, you kind of can't really yes. think even if you know why suffering is a good thing it's not a bad thing the world says it's a bad thing it's really not but when you're in that moment um you know your humanity takes over and you know you don't want to see people suffering in front of you mm -hmm. um and so this went on for a while and um the doctor is still baffled. And um, finally, you know, her pattern started to change. And uh, without warning, we all knew um, the final moments were upon us. Um, my, uh, mm. <clears throat> 
my sister breathed her last breath. And um, the doctor's time of death was 12.01 a.m. Our uh, hearts were broken. And um, we've never witnessed this. I never witnessed somebody passing away in front of me, let alone a family member. And my heart goes out to all those viewers who have experienced mm -hmm. that. Um, I, uh, I sympathize with you. Um, it was the first time I ever seen my father cry. And while we were all crying, uh, my oldest sister um, exhaled a loud deep breath to which we all turned. And she says, oh my God, it's September 8th. It's our lady's birthday. Mm. So um, my sister uh, held on just a bit more for our lady. Uh, Mary wanted a rose for her birthday. Mm. And it turns out my sister's name, my mother named my sister Rosemary. Ah, oh, Mary's Rose, yes. Yeah. And um, so I, I wanted to, to share that first part of the intimate section um, to show the miraculous and how God loves the innocent. And I mean, he loves all of us, but um, Our Lady wanted her and he, she wanted her for her birthday and it to me that's not just a coincidence and it's not just fate or luck or whatever that was designed um so how how old was your sister at this time when she died i have to double check on that um Especially after I read that, my mind's sort of like, Sorry. Oh. no, 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 I no, no. I understand. No, no, that's all right. Um, I will definitely get back to you on that and your viewers. Um, I don't want to give the wrong age and um, my mom yell at me. So, um, no, But about how long did your, your sister roughly live with this difficult gosh, condition? About 50 years. 50, about, okay. So many, ago. many decades. Um, and again, for our, maybe tell a little bit, maybe some of our viewers aren't really familiar with cerebral palsy. Can you maybe just share a little bit that the, the cross your sister would have carried all these years, a little bit about what the condition, you know, meant for her? Sure. So, um, you know, with um, cerebral palsy, um, if I'm not mistaken, and I have to double check a lot of information, but um, it's a chromosome disorder. Mm -hmm. um, and she was pretty much, to give you the extent of her life, is she was bedridden. Um, she couldn't eat by herself. Um, she couldn't talk. She couldn't walk. Um, it's pretty much taking, like taking care of an infant mm. for 50 years. So those people with uh, a child that's just born with the screaming at night and them not being able to tell you what's wrong and you having to... Um, do your best to guess what's wrong. And um, th I think that's the hardest part is when they can't tell you what's wrong. Um, we've had help uh, growing up. We've had help with uh, nurses coming in and uh, taking care of her, taking some of the burden off my parents. And, um, you know, it's... Uh, she had, she had an extreme condition. She would have her seizures. Um, there was times where she, you know, um, couldn't go to the bathroom and she would um, scream for days. She would scream for days. She, 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 there was times where she wouldn't eat for days. I think the longest time she didn't eat or drink, if I'm not mistaken, was either seven or 14 straight days. Wow. And she's, and she was still alive. 
And now that I think about it, why wouldn't Our Lady want her on her birthday? I mean, I don't know of anybody who would survive seven days, let alone 14 days. I mean, Our Lady yes. had her mantle over her. Yes. Um, and we believe with all our heart that it was important for her to be born, to be part of this family, to humble my family, to see the important things in life and not be attached to the world, even though it's hard. You know, we still struggle today. Um, I can only speak for myself. You know, we, mm -hmm. I fight suffering every day with, um, you know, my child, which I'll get into soon enough. Um, and just the sheer nights of her not sleeping and screaming. And it sounds like somebody stabbing somebody. The screaming is that loud. And so it's so, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, profound. Um, yes. So that's pretty much just kind of an idea of what my parents had to uh, endure in, in their life. Well, and, and again, as you've described it, 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 in its most severe form, which it sounds like your, your sister had, it's an incredibly uh, debilitating disease and, and, and condition and one that really made her entire life one of a, a suffering soul. Uh, and your parents, and you know, as many in Catholic world, you know, many of us talk about doing pro-life work, and obviously, there's it's very important protesting, going to abortion clinics, that's all important work. But I, sometimes I think we lose sight that what your parents did for 50 years was some of the most important pro-life work that someone can do to accept from God, you know, a, a, a child that God chose to be, to suffer this way for him and for Our Lady. And to, again, as you admitted, it's not always easy and wasn't always just, you know, happiness to me. Embracing the cross is, is trying, but to care for her uh, the way your parents did for, you know, five decades roughly uh, is incredible, is incredible pro-life work to show have, the true, true yeah. Catholic belief. So I really commend your whole family for that. Yeah, I, I definitely want to throw my oldest sister in the mix mm -hmm. because she she gave up her youth to be by my parents side um to take care of her and so she was taking care of my sister her sister yes. um, while other um a, a, a children and her adults her age were out having fun um yes. and and i think and and, and 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 there's a connection there too with father frank pavone Father Frank Pavone went to school with my sister. Hmm. And so there was another blessing there happening. And um, Father Frank Pavone is a close family friend, lived down the street from us, used to come over and pray the rosary with us, um, just to kind of keep that short. Yes. Um, so. And for our viewer, Frank, Father P uh, Frank Pavone, is, you know, is a, uh, talking of pro-life work, a priest who's done incredible uh, work publicly for that head of priest for life as organization that he's, he's been involved with along with others. But, uh, you, you've certainly met some in, incredible people in your life, incredible priests. Um, so yeah. maybe move on, uh, to show the next, next part of your story, uh, cause uh, there's more to come as, as you, in, as you hinted. Yeah, I just, um, I'll, it's just basically, it's a very, private message I was given permission to share with the world mm -hmm. um, and it's it's not long at all um, and it's very miraculous uh, in itself and so as um, as we now know at this moment um, after my sister passing <clears throat> on that night um, we truly believe that, um, my sister was in heaven witnessing the beatific vision of God being sinless, of course, not from original sin, but being sinless and never having yes. the ability to commit mm. a sin against God. Mm. Um, so when my sister arrived at the funeral home for preparations, uh, the gentleman in charge of taking care of her that night. Um, expressed this private statement to my older sister um, when when I saw your sister 
um, I started to cry. Um, I don't understand what was happening. When I looked at her, she was so beautiful and radiant. In all of my years, I never had an experience like this before. She did not need any makeup or anything from my hands. I wanted to hold her in my arms like she was my own daughter. I'm sorry. I wanted to stay with her for hours and hours, and I did. I stayed with her the whole night. Until she left the next day. I didn't want to leave her alone. I couldn't. When the gentleman's colleague came out with the casket, mm -hmm. he said, who's that for? Send it back. Find the best and most expensive one we have. Mm -hmm. She deserves the very best. And I'm paying for it. Wow, just reading that over and over again. I mean, this guy wasn't even part of our family. And um, there are stories of strangers visiting our house and being drawn into my sister's room. And it's all part of this miraculous connection. And from that moment on, it changed my life. I since then had two more children. God was the center of my life. Um, I attended and ser started serving Latin mass now. Um, and um, this, my story is what led me to the journey of Catholic audio prayers. And, and truly, as we said, obviously your, your sister, your family, your parents had so much to suffer, but you, you really touched on that in that moving story, that great gift of God, because your, your sister, Rosemary, even though she suffered, and obviously, as you say, even though she bore original sin, once that was cleansed in, in baptism, she was not capable. So the the she was not capable of committing an actual sin, um, given her 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 condition, and so was a as you say a, an innocent soul. And that's just beautiful to hear that someone, as you said, who first doesn't even know your family or know the history, and who works all the time in this kind of a situation. You said he worked for the the funeral home. You know that it had to be something supernatural that he for him to have that reaction. I mean that's just not. Not something that's explainable any other way. Uh, and what a beautiful confirmation for your family of the, uh, again, the beautiful life your sister led. And I, and I want your viewers, I want your viewers to know that the, that God um, can work miracles um, in every situation and to never lose hope mm. um, and to continue to pray. Um, cause life is short. Life is short. Yes. Yes. So pretty much here we are at the start of Catholic audio prayers. Did you want to uh, ask a few questions or should I just yes. kind of dive so, into experience? Yes. So how you, um, so what gave you the idea of, of the website of Catholic audio prayers? Um, so the idea came from Mother Angelica. She has, excuse me, recordings of her rosary with some beautiful music uh, to mm -hmm. it. And of course, she must have done this several years back. Um, and listening to them and praying the rosary, I sort of sometimes uh, pick the audio um, version instead of sort of saying it like mm -hmm. traditionally, you know, um, and after listening to the rosary, <clears throat> her rosary, I thought to myself, you know, this music is so beautiful, but it's so hard to hear. Mm. It must have been recorded so long ago. You know, you, it's almost like tape deck type of sound. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Which 
forgive me, mom, mama, mother Angelica. I'm not, I, I, you're the reason why I, I, I did this. And so I thought maybe I can find some music like hers and, and replace it still using her, you know, voice to the rosary. Mm -hmm. And I spent a couple of days doing it and it didn't work out. Um, and I think that was for a reason. Now I, I said, let me record my own rosary, at least for personal use. And let me put some music uh, to it. And so I started searching um, the internet for some music and I stumbled upon a singing monastery, which so happens to be uh, world famous and world famous for a reason because they're blessed with such beautiful voices and they are, um, the monastery in your introduction, uh, the Benedictines of Mary, Queen of Apostles, and so I recorded my first. <clears throat> I recorded my first album for personal use, and then I think something might have come over come over me and say, "I want to share this out. Um, I want to get people praying again. Again, mm -hmm. I want to reach all the Catholics of the world, as in some previous." Um, podcasts that I was a guest on but now that I think about it um, I'd like to reach everybody you know of all denominations because a rosary can change um, someone like that um, if God wills it so um, <coughs> I reached I reached out to um, mother or uh, mother Cecilia I guess yes 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 and again I didn't know her at the time and she got back to me and we had a long conversation. I told her about um, a brief version of my life, not to the extent of what your viewers are gonna get tonight. Um, and, you know, she was, she was very, she said she was very blessed that I was um, sharing the story with her and that I told her what I wanted to do and she gave me her blessing to use the music. And this in the picture here in the far left is, uh is Mother Cecilia there, whom we're speaking about. Uh, I guess I should add for our viewers who, who don't know, I, I actually am familiar with the community. My uh, wife's sister is a professed, uh, professed nun with the Benedictines. So she's been there since the year two, well, in very earlier, uh, I guess, incarnations of the Benedictine, of the current Abbey. She's been there uh, since the year 2000. Uh, so you got her permission to to use this in, uh, in in what you wanted to do. At this point, was it just the rosary? I I mentioned to her um, I wanted to put it to the the rosary, um, but I was also on a quest to do every single rosary and chaplet <laughs> approved every every approved rosary and chaplet that ever exists because no one's ever done this. This is a mm. first, first of its kind. Um, and then, she, you know, she thought that was wonderful. And there was a second phone call where she um, suggested specific music they had to go with specific um, rosaries, St. Michael Chaplet. She, they got music for that. Um, the Holy Souls and so on and so forth. And obviously you can see in my background, your viewers can see my background. I have a good chunk of albums um, that I have uh, created that are on the website um, for those that want to sample them. And the full version is uh, available uh, to them. And moving forward, um, I'd like to have a big, big collection where everybody can sort of um, go to one place and they can browse the whole library that will be and i'm hoping that there will be something for everybody um and it, and it is the the music of these beautiful nuns that um bring out such beautiful prayers um that are said <clears throat> So, and maybe if we jump back to, to the website, because again, you, you mentioned one, and this is, I think, one of the most beautiful chaplets, the St. Michael, the Archangel um, chaplet that I had very, very even traditional chap, uh, Catholics are not, not familiar with. 
Um, so do you, on the website, do you provide a, a text somewhere if someone wants to read the words or how, how to say the chaplet? So I'm actually working on that. Okay. Right, right now it's, if, if somebody does make um, a donation for the full album, mm -hmm. um, I'll ask them if they want the, the quote unquote lyrics or the prayer and I'll do it um, at request. Okay. But eventually, um, when I get more help, I'm, I'm sort of doing this all by myself. Yes. Um, if, obviously, if God wants it so, and this becomes, I don't, I don't, and I don't want to call it a business unless it's a business of saving souls. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, I, donations help um, with, you know, the work that I do in helping support the family. And so I, if I can have a good income that comes in, I can sort of expand. I can get some yeah. help to designate, you know, certain uh, tasks. And I'd like to put the lyrics. I mean, I, I have them, but I'd like to put them attached to each one of these. Mm. Um, I do have some of these on um, iTunes and Spotify. Um, mm -hmm. And frankly, they're, uh, they're very expensive to sort of um, put on there and, and keep on there. So we'll, we'll see where God takes this. Mm. Um, you know, I hope it's his will. I believe it is. And, um, you know, again, I'm, I, I just want to say I'm very grateful to, uh, to be on here and to, sh to share this with you. Sure. Well, let's maybe at that point take a, take a little bit and listen to the sample of the Chaplet of St. Michael. The Chaplet of St. Michael the Archangel, indulgence by Pope Leo XIII, September 25th, 1888, recorded by Richard W. Carlucci, musical background provided by and in conjunction with the Benedictines of Mary, Queen of Apostles, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, O Immaculate Heart, help us to conquer the menace of evil which so easily takes root in the hearts of people of today, and whose immeasurable effects already weigh down upon our modern world, and see to block the path towards the future. From famine and war, deliver us. From nuclear war, from incalculable self-destruction, from every kind of war, deliver us. From sins against the life of man from its very beginning, deliver us. From hatred, and from demeaning of the dignity of children of God, deliver us. Uh, and there again, you get a flavor. As is, this is one of my personal favorite chaplets, the Chaplet of St. Michael. Um, and you hear really the angelic, uh, is the best word I can use to describe it, voices of the, uh, the Benedictine sisters there. Uh, so I, I, again, I, I do want to thank you for this particularly, because I, I, I remember... I was back when Mother Angelica was welcome on w e w t n <laughs> decades ago with the the rosary the beautiful rosary she did uh she did provide and uh for you to take that idea and expand upon it uh with with such this extensive uh collection is really an incredible incredible service uh, for for Catholics and for the church thank you and I actually have a surprise for you and uh your audience yes uh, um I'm sharing uh, this with you. Um, you're going to be the first um, to know <clears throat> during a show that I am recording my first Latin rosary album oh. with two local artists um, from Connecticut and Massachusetts. And when you hear their voices, you and everyone in the world is going to be blown away. And we're in the process of recording this album and soon to be released. And it'll be released through your website? That's where we'd see it? See it. It's going to be released right through the website. Great. That's correct. Great. That, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, and uh, again, so you come to the website, as we mentioned, there's uh, the audio store where we've been looking at the different rosaries or chaplets, some news and information, difference between a rosary and a chaplet. Uh, and then as, uh, as, as Richard mentioned, you know, he... Uh, has six children to support. Having six children of my own, I know 
a little bit of what that can involve. Well, I, um, I, I'm I'm one of six children. Oh, sorry, you're I, one of six. Sorry, I ha but I have four. So four. Okay. <laughs> so excuse me, I did get Don't that. Give right, me but... more than I can handle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God never does. He gives us exactly what we can handle. Just exactly what we can handle. <laughs> right, to the point sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, four children to 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 care for, uh, and again, he's done this clearly out of, out of love. Um, but uh, if if you you know want want to help him uh, with this to help give him the time right that that a donation would by by helping to support him uh, you can do that here right on uh, on the website uh, here to to help obviously you can help by by purchasing the full albums but but uh, also um, directly through through the website and I don't know I may have seen this on your website but I know there's the uh, famous quote from Saint Augustine. Uh, and I, I don't remember the exact, but to paraphrase it, you know, he who sings prays twice. Uh, I mean, you may have something like that on, on your website somewhere. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's really, I think, such a beautiful part to integrate the music because, um, you know, we all, and having six children, you probably know with four, yeah. uh, saying the rosary and, and saying the daily rosary as a family is, is, is challenging. It's a, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a prayer that it, it's very simple. And very simple, and all the chaplets and rosaries are in in what they are, but really to pray it well is is difficult and is complex. Mm -hmm. And uh, aids that we can bring to do that to improve our meditation and our, our efficaciousness of our, our prayer are, are wonderful. Um, and you know, particularly having young children, you know, it's 13 minutes, 14 minutes to say a rosary is a long time for a four or five year old. Uh, but if you can can use the album and the music. Uh, as ways of, you know, helping uh, to 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 form their recollection that that really can be wonderful. So in, encourage people. Uh, it, it's one. I, there's a story I know actually of a, a priest who was visiting in London, and uh, he was staying in a, a particular church there, and there was a, a monk from one of the traditional abbeys. Uh, I think it was. Uh, I think it was La Berube, but I'm not 100% sure of that detail, but one of the traditional abbeys in France who was staying there. And another one of the English priests said, oh, you're, you're one of those monks from that abbey. Oh yeah, you, you love like singing all those chants and those Latin chants and saying the divine office and all that's good for you since you like that so much. And the monk, according to this priest, looked, turned to him and said, actually on a daily basis, I don't like it so much. It's really hard. It's difficult. It's, it's, it's difficult. And, the reason I do it is not because I love it, but because I know it's pleasing to God. And uh, I so much about that that you know the the rosary is uh, is beautiful, but it it you know saying repetition, re repetitive prayers, and saying it every day as as Our Lady wants us to do in the family. Uh, you know we we is is uh, to say it well is difficult, and so to provide these aids for people uh, to help with that, to help bring a spirit of angelic spirit of recollection is really a, a wonderful service for the church. So hopefully uh, our viewers can support you by, by making use of the resources and then donating to your, uh, to your efforts. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. I, with the world um, so busy um, and to pray well, like you mentioned is mm -hmm. often hard. And uh, again, as you said, just to reiterate, hoping that um, this journey um, of Catholic audio prayers, um, at the very least, um, gets everyone else's journey or ball rolling, um, so they can make it to a point where they can pray it very, very well, um, even if um, it's listening to it in their car to work or jogging or at the gym and so on and so yes. forth. Yes, certainly better than listening to CNN news or something at the gym. <laughs> Definitely get more out of it than that. <laughs> Who? Oh, the, I was saying better than listening to CNN or, you know, some I, news. I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know who CNN is. <laughs> Corrupt News Network. No, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but again, there is so much time in our day, whether it's commuting on a train or driving or, or walking somewhere where yeah. uh, if, if I assume you could download these to your phone or, or a, a device. Yeah, they're, they're simple audio format. You can download mm -hmm. them and place them wherever you want. Yes, and then have them have a little library there uh, to, to make use of that time. So, so wonderful. So we're we're about towards the end of our, our time together. Is there any anything else you'd like to share with us about your story or or about Catholic audio prayers? Um, no, but 
uh, I would like to share with all your listeners, um, and again, to reiterate, I know life is hard. It's hard to bear your cross. I get you. I I understand you. Uh, It seems like every day you wake up and you have to do it all over again. It feels like it never ends. Um, But I would say to you, don't give up the fight. Time is short. Your goal is heaven. Yes. Beautifully, beautifully said. Really beautiful. And thank you for sharing, uh, as difficult as it is, the personal story, uh, stories that you did, because they're really very inspiring. And I hope everyone here has been inspired by them. And I certainly can see the the fruit of your family suffering in, in the beautiful work you're doing again for, for the church. So thank you and uh, best of luck with the, the new album you alluded to. And uh, again, remind, rem, rem, I will remind our um, viewers, keep, keep a lookout for that at catholicaudioprayers.space, S-P-A-C-E, catholicaudioprayers.space as the, the website. And I'll have a link to it posted uh, along with the, in- the description of the video. So thank you for taking time to share your stories with us. Um, and uh, if you've enjoyed listening or watching this uh, program, I encourage you as always, please forward, share the video or audio podcast, like it, subscribe, particularly to our Rumble channel. Uh, as I mentioned in our, one of our recent broadcasts, we've received our first strike from YouTube. Um, so we are, have our backup uh, in Rumble. Uh, which is a more free, less censored space. So please begin subscribing over there because I think at some point there's a risk, like many people who speak the truth, we may lose our our YouTube channel. Um, And uh, please, if you also enjoy the free content we make available, consider subscribing to our monthly periodical Catholic Family News. Um, As I mentioned, we we have uh, our May issue. We're finishing off right now as as we're recording this and uh, have a really, some blockbuster articles, one by uh, Chris Ferrara, uh, on the the, the uh, totalitarian regime that COVID has ushered in, and a beautiful article on the shroud, as I mentioned, by Father Couture, which really very very uh, inspiring. So uh, please consider subscribing for as little as thirty two dollars a year. You can get an electronic subscription uh, to the paper. So again, thank you again uh, for sharing your story, and uh, thank you for listening. May God bless you. 